So as many of you know, I just got back from a two-week trip out to the West Coast. I went to Portland with Grid Network to cover the Xfinity Series and Arc Menard Series West, then traveled down to Sonoma, California to cover the West Series there as well with the Truck Series and the Cup Series. And that was my first taste of getting to be in the media center at a NASCAR track, but it wasn't my first taste in the world of sports media. That wasn't even uh, what came with Grid Network and Last Car last year when I started working with both of those groups. Now, my first taste in sports media actually came in 2016. I was fortunate enough to have a chance to go out to Waynesburg University and attend a sports announcing and sports journalism camp out there for a week. The camp was hosted by Lanny Terry, who was the play-by-play -play man for the Pittsburgh Pirates for 33 years and has since taken on a second career at Waynesburg as a professor of sports broadcasting and sports journalism. I got this t-shirt when I was out there, and I don't think I've brought it out since uh, that time six years ago, but I thought now that I've had some experience in the NASCAR world doing that kind of thing, what better time to go back than now and look back at how I did six years ago in my first taste of being on the radio and doing a TV sports report and things that, who knows, maybe I'll get to do again in the future, maybe I won't, maybe my career will take me down a different path, but I thought it might be fun to look back on just how well I did and things that I didn't do so well in my first attempt at doing this sort of thing. Now, some of this stuff I actually didn't rediscover until just last year when I was cleaning out my drawers and found the old thumb drive with some of my work on it. In 2016, I uploaded some of the work that we did out there. I uploaded two clips of me on the radio station, me recording a radio commercial, and also interviewing uh, Mr. Frateri. But I didn't upload my TV sports report and an interview I did with quote-unquote Andrew McCutcheon. You'll see what I mean later on in the video. And I'm not sure why I didn't upload those at the time, but they're up on my channel now. They're unlisted. They're part of the playlist. But I haven't actually gone back and rewatched those probably since I actually taped them six years ago. So those clips in particular will be just as new for me as they are for you. I have gone back and listened to myself on the radio a couple of times. I'm not necessarily looking forward to that because... Uh, I think I made some mistakes and said some things that you're typically not supposed to say on the radio uh, when you're in that position. And again, you'll see what I mean as we get into the video here. But let's start with the radio commercial since that's the shortest thing and talk about that experience there. Waynesburg University is committed to helping young people create lives that matter. The school's mission is to encourage students to make connections between faith, learning, and serving. If you want to be inspired and challenged and make a difference in your community and world, consider enrolling at Waynesburg University. For more information, check out the Waynesburg University webpage, www.waynesburg.edu. That's waynesburg.edu. I actually don't mind the tone that I was using to record that commercial. I'm pretty sure we did three takes and they took the best one, so that might not have been the first take, but... I can tell that there's not nearly as much confidence behind my voice. This was certainly the first time that I was recording voiceover for something like this, and I think I could have stood to be a little bit more confident in how I was coming across in the audio, but that one actually wasn't too bad. I think that's probably the best uh, work that I did uh, across all these seven videos that we're going to look at. So next up is an interview with Lanny himself, and Lanny was such a cool guy and uh, really enjoyed getting the opportunity to actually talk to him and interview him and to have my first interview in this field be with somebody who uh, was teaching me and showing me the ropes and wasn't going to make fun of me if I messed up or had really no expectations of me since this was my first time ever doing this and he knew that it was a very good experience and kind of helped uh, settle me in to what I've continued to do uh, both in college and beyond now with my podcast and uh, opportunities obviously working with Last Car and the Grid Network so I'm excited to look back at this. My guest today is former Pittsburgh Pirates play-by-play -play announcer, Lanny Pateri. I've got a feeling I'm going to be very hard on myself here, but why was there such a long pause between Pirates and play-by-play? -play? You know who your guest is. Just get all that out of the way, introduce him, and get on with the interview. That was one of the things I remember him telling us. Don't waste so much time on your intro. And there I am. I've got a long pause. This really is not off to a great start here. What was it like growing up in Rochester, New York? Well, it was, uh, it was great, uh, mainly because of my parents. I had loving and caring parents who knew that at an early age, at the age of 12, I wanted to be a major league announcer. I don't know if I was just nervous or if I just wasn't holding the microphone as close to me as I should have, but I definitely sense that Lanny is a lot louder and more confident uh, on the playback than I was. So that's something that I think I noticed when I was first listening back to this when I uploaded this six years ago. Uh, again, it might just be a confidence issue or I don't know if I didn't have any experience holding a mic before and that might be part of it as well. 
Uh, speaking of Ithaca, was there anything in Ithaca that helped prepare you for being a play-by-play -play announcer? Is that part of why you chose to go to Ithaca? No, be you mean because I met my wife there, you mean? No, I'm... Uh... I don't know if he was just trying to get a laugh out of me or calm my nerves there, but I didn't really know how to react to that, so I just uh, let him carry on with the answer there. But, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I should have been a little bit more confident again in my delivery on that question, and maybe uh, that would have eased my nerves a little bit right there, but who knows. You spent two years working in play-by-play -play for the minor league baseball team, minor league hockey team. How did that prepare you for your 33 years stint with the Pirates? Well, uh, first of all, announcing the uh, the baseball in the minor leagues, uh, the, the more games you do, the better that you become. Now, but and, but then also proving to myself that I could do other sports, and consequently, in, in my career, I've done not only baseball, but softball, hockey, basketball, and football. And you'd always like to believe that you know how to prepare yourself to do any sport. I would have tried to phrase the question differently, obviously, if I had to do this interview again six years later, but I love play-by-play uh, -play announcers who are so... Uh, multi-talented in terms of the different sports that they can do. That's why Lee Diffie is one of my favorite play-by-play -play guys, because obviously I know him best from the motorsports world, but the man has done track and field and golf and, uh, you know, rugby and all sorts of other things, too, to really diversify his portfolio in terms of play-by-play. -play. And there's such completely different sports and uh, completely different skill sets that are needed. Uh, so that's something I have a great deal of respect for with Lanny as well. Now, you worked with the Pirates for 33 years, now you're retired, but... You chose to come to Waynesburg University to be a professor. What made you choose to take that path? Well, I needed a job, and Waynesburg needed a professor. And I, I opened the paper March 1st of 2009. There was the ad, and they wanted a guy with a master's degree or a gal with a master's degree in teaching experience. I didn't even have either, but they took a chance on me, and, and I think it's worked out pretty well. You enjoyed it very much? Oh, I love it. I love it at Waynesburg. Uh, you know, mainly I love. I, I have a, a strong affinity for the for the students. I uh, every time someone says to me about this generation, I I, I tell them that the students that I've met uh, have been all every bit top shelf and have have proven to me that most of them have dreams that they want to have come true, and I want to be uh, alongside of them and help them in any way I can. That's something I think a lot of businesses could learn: taking a chance on somebody who's passionate about the job but doesn't necessarily have the experience that the job application is asking for, they still took a chance on him. Obviously, things worked out. I think that's something that a lot of people could learn from. You still keep him busy doing some announcing with some local high school or minor league teams? It's just getting more and more obvious to me as this interview is going on that there's no confidence behind my delivery whatsoever. I'm looking for words. I'm looking for the next thing to say. I should have had my questions written out on the piece of paper in front of me. I really should have prepared better for this. So there are the highlights from the interview. If you want to go watch the full thing, all of the videos that I'm looking back on here will be in the description, and they're also in a playlist on my channel. So if you want Lanny's full answers and you want the full conversation, it will be available there. Now we're going to transition into what is probably my favorite video to look back on of my time at Waynesburg. It was being on the Sports Talk radio station 99.5 The Hive to discuss Pittsburgh sports and even a little bit of Philadelphia sports there as well. All of the campers got uh, two chances, basically, uh, two, I guess, periods in between commercial breaks to be on the radio and be discussing sports as if they were on a sports talk show. And that's what we're going to look at right now. And for the first time today, we're going to introduce you to Ben Schneider. Ben is uh, looking down the locations of the campers. You may have traveled the furthest uh, to get here. I was a little surprised when I was the one who traveled the furthest. I guess most Campers were coming from western Pennsylvania or eastern Ohio, and that shouldn't be much of a surprise. But still a little bit of a surprise to me that nobody else saw the opportunity and decided to make a longer drive out than I did. Now, what's the team name out there? Titans. The Titans. Okay. Hey, uh, Kyle. Plum Prunes. No. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> Uh, this is a little running gag between us guys. I'm sure it just sounds like total gibberish, which probably does to most people. Sounds like total gibberish to me as well. To this day, I have no idea what they were talking about there. So for a bit of a Philly report, why don't we go to Ben Schneider. Ben, tell us what Philadelphia has been doing other than seeing Charlie Morton go down for the year with an injury. LOL. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you look eight years ago, we were World Series champs. And then 2011, we had Roy Halladay, Cliff Lee, Roy Oswald, and Cole Hamels. So we have one of the best starting rotations, arguably, in the history of baseball. This is one of the things I remember that they gave him a debrief. I was far from the only camper to do this, but 
When I talked about my hometown Philadelphia sports teams, I said we as if I was a part of a team. You're not supposed to do that when you're in media because you're a sports reporter. Even if it is your favorite team, you're not supposed to say we when you're talking about the team because you're not a part of a team. But I guess uh, when you're just a fan, the fans feel like they're uh, the 12th man in football or the 6th man in basketball or hockey. I guess the 10th man if you want to go to the baseball analogy there. So obviously I don't think it's much of an issue when fans do it, but when you're on radio, when you're on uh, television, you're supposed to remain objective. I guess that it, that is something that uh, you should probably keep in mind. So there's been, I think we have a couple of young guys like uh, Aaron Nola uh, coming up. I know I've mentioned it before, but the lack of confidence is just so disturbing to me. You're on radio. This is a great opportunity. Be bold. Be assertive. Make it sound like you actually are passionate about your baseball team and know what you're talking about here. I think the main problem is we're paying Ryan Howard $25 million this year, and he's that. hitting, he's not even hitting 200 That's going to go down as one of the worst contracts in Philadelphia sports history. It still bothers me to this day. I think that's why you're like only now seeing the Phillies start to try to come out of this uh, playoff drought that they've been in since the 2011 season. And even then, they're so hot and cold right now. It looked like they weren't going to do anything this year, and then they fired Girardi, and now uh, they're one of the hottest teams in the league. And they'll probably cool off before the postseason starts again and end up somewhere around 500 and miss the playoffs entirely. CJ, do you think that uh, uh, this was a poor job by management to handle all those big contracts and not put enough attention on the, uh, on the minor leagues? Or do you think that this worked and now it's just time for them to sort of go another route? In my opinion, that, that's how the Phillies collapsed. With all those big contracts, they did not need to pay Ryan Howard that contract. See, even out-of-market guys are talking about how terrible that contract was. They're starting to pick things up, and by building that, that, that um, new core, by building the farm, they, I think in, in the next three, four years, they could be a legitimate contender. Well, here we are six years later, and the Phillies still have the longest playoff drought in the National League, so I think CJ was a little bit early on that prediction. Still doesn't hold a candles with the Mariners playoff drought though. So Luis, I'm sorry if you're watching this. Hopefully our teams can uh, end our respective droughts sooner rather than later. Now Ben, I kind of want to ask you, um, obviously the Philadelphia Flyer Pittsburgh Penguin thing is still very real in Pittsburgh and obviously out in Philadelphia too. But you know, when I was growing up and before there were the three divisions in the wild card, the Pittsburgh Pirate Philadelphia Philly rivalry was about as intense as anything you're going to see. I kind of forgot about this, and I think Lanny actually said that the Phillies are his second favorite uh, baseball team when it comes to uh, that rivalry there. I guess it doesn't really exist anymore. As long as I've been a baseball fan, uh, they've had the three divisions, and I haven't really thought of the Pirates as a rival. I guess the in-state rivalry uh, still gets to some people, but you know, for us, it's probably now the, uh, the Mets that, that are the biggest rival, geographically speaking, and of course, in the division. So now the topic's going to shift a little bit. This is my second turn on the radio after we took a short commercial break, and I used the NHL Las Vegas image for the thumbnail here, so I think we might be talking about the Golden Knights expansion team and expansion coming to other sports leagues as well. Maybe a few other things uh, in this video as well. Again, it's been a little while since I went back and looked at this. Jonah Phillip from Peters Township, Pennsylvania. Jonah, welcome. Thank you. And Peters Township, the Indians, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell us about Nick Valentich. Nick Valentich. I actually haven't got to see a whole lot of hmm. basketball games, but I know he's coming on a scholarship to Waynesburg University. Whoa, whoa. No scholarships. <laughs> no scholarships. But he's coming. He's Nothing coming to Waynesburg. Division three, yeah. I was wrong. That's all right. Uh, yeah, Division three, no scholarships. I love how even when Jonah gets something slightly wrong, he's still clearly so much more confident in his delivery than I was. But yes, that is true. Division three, I can speak as a former Division three uh, cross-country and track athlete myself. There are no scholarships at the Division three level. Of course, right now in the city of Pittsburgh, uh, the parade uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm guessing. Do I would you assume to know it's, it's been wrapped up. Yeah, uh, as we get into 2:30. I forgot. I guess that's why we shifted the discussion. The Penguins had just won the Stanley Cup, and I guess the parade was happening that very same day. So it made sense that we wanted to talk about hockey at some point on the radio. Now I have to ask Ben: uh, Are you a Flyers fan? Are you a hockey guy? I I do follow them a little bit. I haven't followed them as much in recent years, but uh, remember watching them in the Stanley Cup final six years ago so I know a few of the names but don't follow them as closely as I probably should and I still don't it's been so hard for me to get into hockey and get into the Flyers because they've been so mediocre for so long and it's also the sport of the four major North American sports that I probably know the least about to this day 
Uh, I'd say the Sixers are probably my number one team at this point, followed by the Eagles. And the Phillies would probably be level with them if they could get to a level where they're competing for a championship again. My knowledge of hockey is still a little bit less. I'll watch the Flyers, particularly if they're having a good season, but they haven't had a good season in a very long time. So it's been, uh, I think, what has it been now, 40 seven years since they won the Stanley Cup. So uh, my, my parents were in kindergarten the last time it happened. I think it's uh, it's been a rough go for Philadelphia Flyers fans. Maybe if they got good again, I could uh, I could get into their games a little bit easier. Now, is uh, is Delaware pretty much, and uh, obviously Delaware not a large state, but is it pretty much all fly, is it pretty much all Philadelphia supporters or is, or is there another sort of market that leaks into there? I'd say Baltimore kind of leaks in and obviously <laughs> Baltimore's just Ravens Orioles don't have a basketball or hockey team. I'm not really sure why I brought up the Baltimore market. I think I can count on one hand how many Baltimore sports fans I knew growing up, whereas pretty much all of us that uh, didn't stay loyal to the hometown team of their parents or their family or where they were originally from grew up as Philadelphia sports fans. It's the closest team. It's about twice as close to us as Baltimore uh, sports complex is with the Ravens and Orioles. So I guess it kind of bleeds in a little bit, but it's mostly Philadelphia sports up here in northern Delaware. Let's kind of look at it, uh, get your guys' opinion. Do you think that this move to Las Vegas for a pro sports franchise is something that will ultimately be good for the franchise itself and for the NHL? I, I think it's... Uh... I'm not going to put this awkward silence on me. I'm going to put it on the guy that was asking us the questions. He should have said specifically if this question was going to me or to Jonah. And I don't think either of us expected to go first here, and there was a period of awkward silence there. So it bothers me, but I'm not putting that one on me. That should have been, uh, we should have been given a little bit better direction. How's that? It could bring some revenue to the city. And I think you look at the basketball side of it, having some summer league in Las Vegas, there's been some talk if the NBA ever wanted to get to the point of expansion again, that would be one of the cities that they look at. So I think a few years down the road, it could be a good move for both the city and the league. I still think Vegas deserves an NBA team. If I were in charge of expansion for the NBA, i put a team in Las Vegas, I'd bring back the Seattle Supersonics, and I'd move the Grizzlies from the Western Conference to the Eastern Conference since they never relocated conferences when they moved from Vancouver, and Memphis is certainly more on the Eastern side of the country. So then you'd have 16 teams in each conference, everybody would be happy. Now when you look at the major, sport, uh, major sports leagues in uh, the country, obviously the NHL right now, uh, a pretty distant fourth behind the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball. So a much bigger story uh, that I think is still going on, maybe even overshadowing this new NHL franchise, potentially, uh, is the Oakland Raiders and the talk about moving the Raiders to Las Vegas. How's that for foreshadowing? Do you find it odd at all that the NHL would be there before the NFL, or do you think it's, it's in the NHL's best interest because they need that extra attention, as it, whereas the NFL does not? I honestly do find it. Once again, this question was not directed at anybody. So we both came in at the same time. He should have addressed one of us. Well, I find the whole landscape of actually the NFL teams kind of odd because they don't have a team in California, or at least a team like that would have a bigger name in California more so. Well, here's another blooper for everybody, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what Jonah was thinking here. Maybe he had Los Angeles on his mind, but even then the Rams had just moved back to Los Angeles. And even then you have the 49ers, the Chargers, and the Raiders were still in Oakland at the time. So... Not sure exactly what he meant here by the NFL not having a team in California. I do think it's odd, but I'm not surprised at all that the NHL got there first because, like you said, they are just in fourth, and they need that extra revenue and attention. And I think, you know, you look at the Rams moving to Los Angeles this summer, there are a lot of people in St. Louis that definitely aren't happy about that at all. So I think if you're trying to get the Raiders to move to Las Vegas, the NFL is going to have a difficult time doing that. How about bringing up the fact that the NHL had some room to grow? The NFL had 32 teams. The NHL at the time only had 30 teams. Now, of course, they have 32 with the Golden Knights and the Seattle Kraken. So I'm surprised that I didn't think of that point to bring up as well. With the NHL, you could grow by adding a team, whereas the NFL really had to take a team that already existed in a major city and move it to California, move it to Los Angeles, leaving the fans in St. Louis unhappy and probably the fans in Oakland uh, unhappy as well. Very good points made as we're just about to the bottom of the 2 o'clock hour. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And we'll be back with more sports talk on 99.5 The Hive, your home for everything Waynesburg. So now we're moving on to the things that I have never watched back before. I'm really curious to see how this goes. Uh, this is an interview that I did with a Waynesburg uh, employee who was pretending to be Andrew McCutcheon because I guess we couldn't get Andrew McCutcheon himself to come to the college. So... 
Let's get into it. Good afternoon. I'm Benjamin Schneider. Why did I insist on going by Benjamin? I don't understand this. Ben Schneider rolls off the tongue so well. Benjamin Schneider takes so much longer to say. I really don't know what I was thinking in high school deciding to try to make a name for myself as Benjamin and being Benjamin Schneider rather than just Ben Schneider. It's so much easier. I'm joined here by Pittsburgh Pirates center fielder and former National League MVP, Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm willing to bet there was no teleprompter. I'm not looking into a camera. I'm looking all around. I'm not looking directly at my guest. I have no direction whatsoever. This is already going absolutely terrible. And I haven't even asked the first question yet. What was it like growing up in Fort Meade, Florida? Did I really use the exact same template with no variety whatsoever? That's literally the very first question I asked Lanny. What was it like growing up in Ithaca? Now I ask Andrew McCutcheon what it's like growing up in his hometown. There should have been a little bit more variety there. Yeah, Fort Meade's a pretty small town relative to Pittsburgh, uh, relative to most places, so... I can tell this isn't fully in HD, which I guess for 2016 still might have been a bit of a stretch for a college campus like Waynesburg. But I have to say, it is a pretty nice setup that we have here. Did you play any other sports growing up, like in high school? Or uh, we actually had a baseball? pretty good water polo team in, in Fort Meade, so, uh, you know, I enjoy playing water polo. But, uh, you know, the other, outside of the Olympics, there's not really much you can do with water polo. So that's why... I pursued baseball. Again, I don't know if he's just trying to get a laugh out of us or whatever the deal is there, but I'm pretty sure Andrew McCutcheon did not have a water polo career uh, at all. In fact, the only water polo player I can think of off the top of my head is actually Will Kane, who walked on to the Pepperdine team, and they brought that up on first take several times when he was at ESPN. But other than that, I don't think I can even name any water polo player off the top of my head, and Andrew McCutcheon certainly isn't one of them either. You were drafted by the Pirates in 2005. You have questions in front of you. Ask them, why is there such a long pause? We're not even a minute into this. Oh, man. How, how did that experience feel, you know, hearing your name called? How did it feel? The worst question you can ask somebody in the sports world. How do you think it felt if they're at a high moment? How do you think it felt if they're a low moment? Be a little bit more creative. Don't just ask somebody, how does it feel? That's the easiest cop-out you can ever come up with. Don't do it. You've won both a gold glove and an MVP award. Is there one that is more meaningful to you than the other? Uh, not really. I mean, I think that they both say different things about you. I think that the MVP is more of a, an offensive statistical award. That's actually very similar to a question that I asked AJ after he won at Portland. Do you rank the wins any differently at this stage in your career than you did when you won the champ car race at Portland 16 years ago. And he basically gave the same answer. You don't really rank wins or accomplishments because they're all so hard to get. So I guess I had a similar mindset when I was doing this interview six years ago. Yeah, where obviously the, the gold glove is just that. It's for, for defensive, uh, you know, the, the defensive awards. So I take a lot, little bit more pride, I'd say, in that because I think that defense is a little bit of an underrated part of the game. Well, at the same time, there is a saying, defense wins championships. So I think anybody who knows the sport well enough knows how important that is. You guys won 98 games last season, had a fantastic year. You know, I forgot just how good the Pirates were in the mid-2010s, winning 98 games in 2015. And then you had the Cavaliers, who had just gotten LeBron James back. They went on to win a championship. So Pittsburgh not having a basketball team, the, the Cleveland market kind of bleeds into the Pittsburgh market a little bit when it comes to basketball. And then the Steelers with Roethlisberger and all those guys, they are always, you know, perennial contenders to at least get into the playoffs. So, yeah, it was a really good time, I guess, in the mid-2010s to be a Pittsburgh uh, or Western Pennsylvania sports fan. And the Cubs are on a almost a historic pace, if you sure. will. Once again, pretty good foreshadowing there. This is Benjamin Schneider signing off. Thank you for watching. Well, thank goodness that one's over. That was the one that I was dreading the most. So now we're going to look at the final part of his playlist here. This is a TV sports report. So basically, I was looking into a teleprompter giving the sports highlights of the day. I do have a radio sports report in the playlist as well, but it was the exact same copy and the exact same stories. We were just doing it over radio rather than television, so it's going to be pretty repetitive. I figured I'd just go ahead and take a look at the TV one. The Penguins won their fourth Stanley Cup last night, defeating the San Jose Sharks in Game 6, 3-1. Captain Sidney Crosby won the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player of the finals. I feel like my delivery is a little bit better here. I do think I'm kind of tilting my head to the side a little bit, so I'm not a fan of that. But I'm also not a fan of the feedback that we're getting here. You'd think we'd be in a little bit more of a controlled environment where we didn't have to deal with that, but I guess we weren't. The Pirates lost all three games of a series against the Cardinals this past weekend. The Buckos are 12 games out of first place and two and a half games back in the wild card standings. They really had us call them the Buckos. I don't think I'd even heard that nickname before I'd gotten out to Pittsburgh, but... 
it felt kind of weird to be doing this professional sports reporting exercise and refer to a team by their nickname like that. Although, I don't know, maybe some Pittsburgh sports fans can educate me. Is that common slang to call the Pirates the Buckos? I don't think I really hear that that often, at least not here in the Philadelphia market. Tomorrow, the Pirates open a three-game series in New York against the Mets. I think these were the highlights for a day earlier because I know I said on the radio I was rooting for the Pirates that night when they were playing the Mets. So I guess that this was uh, written up a couple days earlier and we were just using it on the same day for the purposes of the exercise. In high school baseball, four Western Pennsylvania teams are competing in the state semifinals tonight. In Quad A, Plum plays Marple Newtown. In Double A, Riverside takes on Bishop McCourt. And in single A, Sarah Catholic meets Vincentian Academy. So here I feel like my delivery's gotten a little bit weaker, but I think I know the reason for it. I don't know who any of these teams are. I'm from out of the market, and these aren't professional teams that I'm familiar with anyway. So I think I'm having to think about what I'm saying a little bit more than just Pittsburgh Pirates or something that rolls off the tongue pretty easily. The U.S. Open Golf Tournament starts Thursday at Oakmont Country Club. Jordan Spieth is the defending champion. Pittsburgh had the U.S. Open that year. My goodness, it was a really good time to be a Pittsburgh sports fan. And finally, Golden State could win the National Basketball Association championship tonight at home. The Warriors are, lead the C Cleveland Cavaliers in the best of seven series, three games to one. Well, the delivery was pretty bad there, but at least it's not as bad as dropping three games in a row to be the only team to blow a 3-1 lead in the NBA Finals. That's sports. I'm Benjamin Schneider. So I hope you all enjoyed that walk down memory lane with me. It was, I have to admit, kind of fun going back and looking at just how far I've come when it comes to this sort of thing. But even a video like this, I've never like done a video uh, for my YouTube channel where I'm looking into the camera again and uh, you know presenting something like this before. So maybe six years from now, I'll be looking back on this video and also uh, my highlights from Grid Network and some of my older videos on this channel with the extra experience I'll have six years down the line. Maybe I'll be able to point out some flaws in the current work that I'm doing right now as well. But thank you all very much for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.